When we think of the Sahara Desert, we imagine the vast amount of golden sand, sand dunes, and maybe the odd camel or two. But there's more to this desert than meets the eye. Blanketing much of the northern third of the African continent, or some 3.5 million square miles, the Sahara Desert, which is the largest desert in the world, extends eastward from the Atlantic Ocean some 3,000 miles to the Nile River and the Red Sea, and southward from the Atlas Mountains of Morocco and the Mediterranean shores more than 1,000 miles to the savanna called Sahel. More than 16 times the size of France, the Sahara Desert blankets nearly all of Mauritania, Western Sahara, Algeria, Libya, Egypt and Niger, the southern half of Tunisia, and the southern parts of Mali, Chad, and Sudan. In this video, we're going to take a look at what's hidden underneath all that sand and find out how the sand got to be there. Deep in the Sahara Desert, ancient rock paintings depict a verdant world full of elephants, cattle, giraffe, hippos, and antelope. The people who created these images lived in North Africa when the now hyper-arid Sahara was a very different place. While today the Sahara is a dry, sandy, mostly inhospitable place, new evidence is showing us how a lush and verdant ecosystem may have been maintained as researchers have discovered the remains of a prehistoric river system buried beneath the desert and lost to the sands of time. For centuries, if archaeologists wanted to find an ancient or mythical site, they trudged through desert sands or rainforest thickets armed with little more than rumors and hand-drawn maps. They worked from historical accounts and biblical texts and a lot of educated guesswork. But all that changed in the late 20th century when some of them began to use a new tool, remote sensing. As satellite imaging and radar evolved and became more accessible, a scientific community that had once measured the rise and fall of civilizations based on a few archaeological dig sites was suddenly turning up features hundreds or thousands of kilometers long. The possibility that a river system once existed in the region was first hinted at over a decade ago. Beyond the mouth of the Nile River, layers of sediment rich in organic material testify to periods of bigger flows, and off the coast of Mauritania to the west, there are also layers of river sediment and no river. What's more, surveys of the seafloor along Mauritania's coastline discovered a large submarine canyon similar to those connected with major rivers elsewhere. However, direct evidence needed to confirm this was lacking. This time around, the scientists, led by the French Research Institute for Exploitation of the Seas, Charlotte Skonetsny, used orbital radar satellite imagery, which allowed them to take images of the geology of the Sahara meters below the sandy surface using microwaves. From this data, the scientists could see the ancient riverbeds of the waterway, which incredibly matched up with the canyon off the coast. In full flow, the river would have carried organic material from the land out into the ocean, where it sustained a rich ecosystem of filter feeders and other organisms in the canyon. But the river was destructive too, occasionally sending rapid, turbulent rushes of water and sediment down the canyon. Similar flows are still active off the coast of Taiwan today and hold enough power to destroy submarine cables and other infrastructure. Starting some 250,000 years ago, a series of humid periods began. During these periods, rainfall shifted over the western Sahara, making the region wetter. When the Nile River pushed through a low channel near Wadi Tushka, it flooded the eastern Sahara, creating a lake that at its highest level covered more than 42,000 square miles. Stretching for over 500 kilometers 300 miles from the middle of the Sahara to the coast of Mauritania in West Africa, the river would have been fed by water from the Atlas Mountains to the Hagar Mountains to the east. In fact, the river system was so vast that if it was still flowing today, it would be ranked as the 12th among the largest on Earth. The researchers believe that it once fed the proposed Taman Rasset River. About 11,000 years ago, the desert turned green. Grass grew on the dunes, lakes filled dry depressions, grassland animals moved in, and people followed. It was the most recent African humid period, or Green Sahara. It's estimated that the river had been periodically flowing up until around 5,000 years ago when the lush, wet, and humid Sahara, which teemed with people, plants, and wildlife, turned into the dry, dusty place we know today. During the last Green Sahara, the region received 10 times the rain that falls in the desert now. According to a 2017 study published in Science Advances, led by Jessica Tierney, a paleoclimatologist at the University of Arizona. 
The study also found evidence of a 1,000-year pause in the Green Sahara conditions 8,000 years ago, during a time people abandoned permanent settlements in the area. The cycles in Earth's orbit include a wobbling top motion called precession that alters the extremity of summer and winter. These switches between the wet and dry periods are estimated to occur every 20,000 years or so, as the Earth wobbles on its axis. When the summer sun is stronger over northern Africa, the equatorial boundary in Earth's atmospheric circulation is pushed to the north, and life-giving rain comes with it. Whether or not the ancient river beneath the desert will flow again during the next African human period is difficult to determine, however. Considering the ongoing global perturbation of the climate system due to the increase of greenhouse gases, only the development of climate models might be able to provide some clues in the near future. Records from ocean sediments show that the Green Sahara happens repeatedly. The next Northern Hemisphere summer isolation maximum when the Green Sahara could reappear is projected to happen again about 10,000 years from now in AD 12,000 or AD 13,000. But what scientists can't predict is how greenhouse gases will affect this natural climate cycle. Paleoclimate research provides unequivocal evidence that what humans are doing is pretty unprecedented. Even if humans stop emitting greenhouse gases today, these gases would still be elevated by the year 12,000, and climate change will still be superimposed onto the Earth's natural climate cycles. That said, there is geologic evidence from ocean sediments that these orbitally paced Green Sahara events occur as far back as the Miocene Epoch, including during periods when atmospheric carbon dioxide was similar to and possibly higher than today's level. So a future Green Sahara event is still highly likely in the distant future. Meanwhile, there is another way to turn parts of the Sahara into a green landscape. If massive solar and wind farms were installed there, rainfall could increase in the Sahara and its southern neighbor, the semi-arid Sahel, according to a 2018 study published in the Science Journal. Wind and solar farms can increase heat and humidity in the areas around them. An increase in precipitation, in turn, could lead to vegetation growth, creating a positive feedback loop. However, this huge undertaking has yet to be tested in the Sahara Desert, so until such a project gets funding, humans might have to wait until the year 12,000 or longer to see whether the Sahara will turn green again. Scientists will continue to use satellites to hunt down more rivers hidden beneath the sands. Other large Paleo River systems are still to be discovered in the Sahara, with the help of orbital radar data, which may help to fill the gap between giant marine systems and the absence of superficial features associated in the continent. This study goes to show how the climate can change incredibly rapidly, so fast that within just a few thousand years, all surface evidence of this vast ancient waterway has been buried and the local ecosystem altered beyond recognition. The Sahara already evokes a sense of mystique and otherworldliness, so it seems completely in character for it to have long-lost rivers flowing beneath its surface. It may seem like an eternal wasteland from our perspective on Earth, but when viewed from space, this desert is revealed to be as dynamic as its iconic shifting sands. What do you think about the secret rivers hidden beneath the Sahara Desert? Do you think they will ever be seen again? Let us know in the comments below and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Brain Impact for more. Thanks for watching.